Hey YouTube, it's Marshall Freeman here for TradingDetectives.com. Uh, this is our guide for Escape from Durgash Prison, uh, Far Cry's first major DLC pack that introduces uh, roguelike survival elements to the game. Now what you need to know about Escape from Durgash Prison is that it's timed. They give you 30 minutes to complete it. Now you can increase that by completing uh, random events and missions. The other thing you need to know is that it's once you die, it's over. You need to start over. Some of your weapons and abilities will carry over, but you will need to complete every mission again. Now you can increase uh, your time limit in a number of ways, uh, mostly by completing karma events from a uh, typical standard vanilla Far Cry 4, such as hostage rescues, uh, finding the masks of Yulong, intercepting fights between uh, guards and rebels. Um, you can disarm bombs. These events are all random. Uh, they're not found in any specific order on the map, although typically they do center around the outpost. Now, the map for Escape from Durgash Prison is just the map for Northern Karat in the vanilla Far Cry 4 game. And just like vanilla Far Cry 4, there are undiscovered locations littered across the map, as well as side missions. Now, these side missions increase your level and unlock skill points for you. They also provide you with additional benefits in the final survival element of the game mode, although half of these are pretty pointless. There are only two upgrades that you really need, and those are the ammo crates and the rebels from the hostage, hostage rescue mission. Now the undiscovered locations are very important because here you'll discover weapons, animal parts for crafting, and ammo in the loot chest. Discovering those locations will also award you a modest sum of XP that will help you early on. Now wildlife is one of the most dangerous threats in Escape from Durgash Prison. You're walking around running your own business and then an eagle, a bear, a pack of wolves, a tiger will uh, come ruin your day. Now when you start Escape from Durgash Prison, you'll begin on this bell tower, and your first impulse might be to jump down with the wingsuit uh, to get running because of the uh, timer there. But what, really what you want to do is just take your time, slowly climb down, you'll find an ammo chest, which will give you a lot of ammo to start with. And then you'll find a body that has a pistol on it. Now, the different times I've played the game, the pistol has been different. I've found a Desert Eagle. I found uh, the revolver you see there, as well as a Makarov. Now, because you have to start over when you die, you want to put all your skill points into uh, abilities that increase your ability to survive. Now, this includes the buffs for uh, total health, health bars, survival syringes, uh, the strength of your health syringes, as well as your ability to heal without syringes. And you'll also later want to take some of the takedown abilities because they'll come in handy during the survival wave. This is a look at the final build I had uh, when I beat Durgesh Prison. Now, Yuma's Revenge is probably the first mission you'll play when you start Escape from Durgesh Prison because it's uh, not too far from the bell tower where you start. It's also the easiest by far because it's really the only mission that gives you access to heavy weapons and the objective is just to kill a moving target that's defenseless. Now, these boats will come in waves and you'll have to destroy them, uh, but after the first wave, enemies will start to spawn to defend the boats, but uh, as long as you know they're there and you're pretty good at aiming the grenade launcher, you're not going to have to worry about them because they'll be dead before they can even get within firing range of you.
Now, this is really the only risk from this mission. Um, if you get killed here, it's because there's a guy hiding on the path to the right there that you can kind of see out of the peripheral vision. Luckily though, if you die uh, during Yuma's Revenge, since this should really be your first stop in Escape from Durgesh Prison, uh, you won't have to go back very far, probably like five minutes, depending on how long you took to get here. That helicopter always spawns there. You always shoot it down. It's pretty. It's uh, as long as you realize it's there and it's coming. When it comes about wave three or four, uh, you'll be prepared and you'll be able to destroy it easily. And for uh, finishing Yuma's Wrath, you earn five minutes on the timer. Now, your second stop should be the de bomb defusal mission, because in addition to being very close to Yuma's Wrath, it also gives you the bow. You can see here that I already had one that I found in the cave system uh, just south of Yuma's Wrath and the Bell Tower where you start the game. But if you don't have the bow, it's important to come here first, after finishing Yuma's Wrath, because you'll get a free bow, and uh, the bow is pretty essential to finishing uh, Escape from Durgesh Prison because it gives you uh, silent kills, it gives you instant kills on unarmored targets. Um, if you don't have a big weapon or explosives, it's one of the best weapons you can use against uh, heavy enemies. Now, this is one of the only two missions that you can fail by being discovered. So don't be discovered. Uh, work carefully, work slowly make sure to mark all the enemies around and on the tower as I did when I was coming in. Hide bodies so they don't... Uh, so you're not really at risk of enemies patrolling and finding them, but they might see them if you just leave them lying around just as they make their uh, walk across the way. Now, the guys hanging out on the outside of the tower are your biggest threats because they're the only ones who can look up and see you as that you're sneaking. The guys on the ground floor will not be able to see you. And if you're discovered, it's going to be by them. In fact, I was discovered by them after I'd already completed the mission. But at that point, it didn't matter. Now just make your way up slowly and carefully, disarming the bombs walking up the tower, making sure no one sees you, making sure all your corners are clear. Make sure none of the bodies fall off the tower because that will give you away immediately. And we can also see through the floorboards, so be careful there. Now once you complete this mission, an enemy helicopter will uh, approach the tower to shoot you down, so immediately just book it out of there once you've completed this mission. Don't stick along for too long to just explore uh, the poster that you can tear down for time just is more of a liability than it is a benefit or a reward. As you can see there, I shot that guy, he fell off, and it immediately alerted the guy above him. So again, make sure they're uh, centered and not close to the edge. Another benefit of completing the tower is that you get C4, which is uh, very useful against heavies as well as enemy vehicles.
Now, in my uh, in in my opinion, you don't really need to do the propaganda center mission because the benefit it gives you of placing caged animals in the uh, survival wave area is more of a liability and they're unpredictable and in my experience they were more likely to go after me than to go after the enemy so uh, you don't really need to come here there is a bow which is a benefit there's also a RPG there in one of the buildings I'm just doing this uh, just to demonstrate how to finish it. Now you want to crawl up this tower because nobody can really see you, just like normal Far Cry. Just stay low until you find and kill this sniper. Then take his rifle. Now you can use the rifle to kill the heavy that is typically patrolling the streets, but where he is right now, um, I'm unable to get to him. He's over there by the t radio tower over there. Hiding and safe. Sniper rifles are very effective, very essential for finishing outposts because they give you a one hit kill on heavies uh, with a headshot. And I think it's like two or three to kill them otherwise. Now the propaganda center is one of the uh, missions in Escape from Durgash Prison where it doesn't really matter whether you're discovered or not. Uh, it just kind of ups the difficulty a little bit because enemies will be looking for you. Oh, uh, blow up that tower. You'll want to blow up that tower um, in an earlier attempt at this. Uh, don't stand too close because I blew myself up. I threw the C4 on the little generator. I walked away thinking I was a badass and then the tower fell on me. So destroy that as soon as possible and destroy from far away. As you can see there, it was a benefit to me because it killed, I think, two or three people, including the heavy. Now, once you've killed the guys who are already there, some reinforcements are going to show up, but you don't really need to worry about that because by the time they get inside the propaganda center, you'll have already destroyed everything and you can just run out. Just like in the propaganda centers in Far Cry 4, just walk through all the little areas, destroy this poster if you want, just walk through all the areas, blow up the vehicles, blow up the computers, blow up the ammunition, printing presses, uh, stocks of posters. Keep a lookout, because there's some good loot in the buildings. But like I said, the added benefit of animals in cages and elephants in the map just aren't worth it. In fact, I've only seen elephants two or three times. One is always guaranteed to spawn outside of the propaganda center from my experience, but I've only seen them two or three times just in the game map. Now once you've destroyed everything in the propaganda center, you can uh, just leave. I suggest leaving out the door you came through. Well, you didn't come through it next to the tower you used to enter the propaganda center because uh, it just seems less well defended and the people defending it seem to be lightly armored enemies. The eye for an eye mission is probably the most uh, important because this is the mission that one gives you gyrocopters which make exploring the map a lot easier because you can cover the entire map in two to five minutes. It also gives you ammo caches during the survival wave which are very important there. You do not want to run out of ammo uh, during the survival wave to have to peek out and uh, scrounge off uh, scavenge weapons that you pull off dead enemies. And like the propaganda center, it doesn't matter if you are spotted. Uh, personally, I prefer getting spotted as soon as possible. 
uh, because it automatically marks all of the officers on your map. Now, you can see there I picked up the crossbow, which has the benefit of being like the bow, but uh, it's a secondary weapon. It provides, it has a uh, different ammo type, so you are carrying twice as many arrows. Once you've killed the officers, do not forget to go back and take their pictures, which is why you're here. Most of the enemies here are lightly armored, so they're not much of a threat, especially if you have a crossbow and a bow, because you'll kill them instantly, or after only a couple shots. Uh, to clarify, you have one on the basement, you have one in the tower, and then you have one guy back here next to some boats. And from my experience, these guys are always here, as long as you've tripped the alarm. The hostage rescue is probably the hardest mission, but it's also the most essential because it gives you the rebels. Um, now, because it's a hostage rescue, automatically being found pretty much means that you've lost because they'll kill those guys really quick. And two of them are in an open area uh, where you're just not going to be able to defend them very easily. So what you want to do is you want to sneak back through uh, here where the tall buildings are because this is, one, where the most cover is, and two, uh, allows you to kill the snipers the most quickly because those guys are going to be a big problem. If you're spotted, those are going to be the guys that find you. And once you've killed them, you can just hide behind all of their uh, cover. Just a nice, safe, warm uh, nest. Just like a nest of like, deadly deadly sexy viper now one of the, the hostages is located in the building that I'm currently standing on now I'll show you where the fourth hostage is later they're really far away from the other hostages located uh, in the other corner of the compound quickly make your way to the other roof Make sure nobody sees you, and from here you can hide where nobody will be able to find you. Uh, someone may try to climb up to see you, but you can immediately kill them. Uh, while they're searching for you, you can just go ahead, pick them off one by one, they'll never know what happened. Now just for the sake of a quick count, we have one hostage here in the back. In this building, we have two in the courtyard, next to the animals. And these are the two hostages you really need to worry about getting killed if you're spotted, because they don't have any cover. And finally, we have a fourth hostage in the opposite corner of the map. Hidden inside here. Now once you arrive at the survival wave, assuming that you are the appropriate level, you have the right equipment, you have uh, ammo stocks, or whatever else you've unlocked through the missions, uh, go ahead and set defenses now, because you're not really going to have time for them later, because of the snipers that are hiding about. And these will kill a lot of people, but they'll help uh, alleviate the first wave. I've uh, fast-forwarded through a lot of this because it's just combat uh, for 10 minutes. It's, it's not exciting footage. Basically, just shoot the guys, stay in cover. Now, you want to avoid the snipers, and that means you want to always stay in cover. You always want to have cover between you and the radio tower over there. You don't want to even try to fight the snipers because at this distance... Uh, it's just not worth it. You want to stay out of these alleyways where you have uh, too much cover because you're boxed in. 
as you can see there, one sniper on that side, and now there will be a second sniper popping out who has me pinned down. And boop, there he is. So as soon as you get to the point where you have more than one sniper you have to deal with, you just want to hold back near the helicopter because that's the high ground. There shouldn't be any other snipers who can get to you aside from one who spawns on the roof. Sometimes. I uh, has to climb up there, so hopefully you can kill him before then. And just hold out. Just survive. <sighs> Don't take any risks. That's basically what the survival wave boils down to. Grab ammo when you need it, and stay behind cover. Stay near the helicopter. This is where the rebels spawn back here once they've been killed. Uh, they continually spawn, so you don't need to worry about that. But they spawn back here, so you'll always have backup over here. Uh, when you get low on health, you can go ahead and hide in this hut. That's right down below the helicopter. This is probably the best hiding spot, because it gives you two doors to shoot out from. It protects you from the snipers. And it just gives you a lot of cover uh, to heal, especially when you're out of syringes. Because that healing animation takes way too long. Now I prefer the light machine gun and the assault rifle in the final wave uh, because those are the two ammo types enemies drop the most. They keep, it makes it really easy to keep yourself supplied with ammo at all times without having to go to the crates. Uh, they also drop SMGs so if you prefer that over a light machine gun or an assault rifle uh, that should work just as well. Wait for the timer to drop to zero and then make your escape to the chopper and you've just completed the escape from Durgash prison. Um, I hope this guide's been helpful to you. Uh, like, subscribe to Trade-In Detectives. For more video guides, look to tradeindetectives.com for written guides as well as uh, trade-in prices in the UK. Uh, if you have any questions about this guide, any other questions about Far Cry 4 Escape from Durgash prison, Go ahead and leave a comment and I'll try to get back to you.